verses from that chapter and have receive our text from that chapter rather. John chapter 8 verses 21 through 24. It's recorded there that Jesus said, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I have said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am, ye shall die in your sins. We're quite familiar with particularly verse 24 as it's often referenced in what we call the plan of salvation. I personally prefer to using this verse to point to belief in Christ because I think it gets to the heart of the matter. When we say you must believe, we're not saying in Santa Claus. We're not saying in some mystical force. We're not saying anything outside of belief in Christ. But it's not merely believing that he existed in the flesh. It's believing that Christ is deity. Christ is God. This is crucial in obeying the gospel. We know throughout history that at one point, all of mankind knew who God was, knew Jehovah. Then Gentiles knew him, but they removed him from their lives. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 28. The Jews were very well acquainted with him, for they had the law of Moses. And throughout history, God dealt directly with mankind. However, we're told in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, that even though that was the case, God now deals with mankind through Jesus Christ, his son. Now, throughout his earthly ministry... Jesus, the Christ, provided ample evidence that he was, in fact, the very Son of God. He lived up to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. By the statement in our text, he claimed that he was God. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. He proved that he was the Son of God through the signs, miracles, and wonders that he performed, and later that his apostles would perform. Therefore, he expected all to believe or have faith in him as not only the prophet of God, but the Son of God. As deity, Jesus has the power to forgive sin. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. As the creator, Jesus knew the spiritual condition of this fleshly world. He brought it all into physical existence. And he has seen how mankind has tarnished his physical creation. He knows the world is lost. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. He told the Jews of his day that if they did not believe on him and in him, they would die in their sins. Verse 24 of our text. The remedy to this sin was to believe. That is, to have confidence in the fact that Jesus Christ is God. In verse 24, he makes reference to Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. Where Moses asked Jehovah, who will I say sent me? And Jehovah responds, I am that I am. It took me a while to realize what's going on there, but he's stating the fact of his existence. 
You see, God can't say, I was, or I will be. No, I am. God is the I am. So is Jesus. He makes that claim here. And if we are to indeed be remitted of our sins, we must come to that conclusion through our own study. That God manifested himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ. So any who desire to have salvation must accept this truth. The first century Jews and Gentiles were expected to, to believe in Christ. To accept the fact that he was deity. All alive today are expected to have the same type of faith. The same basis of their faith that Jesus is God. Jesus pointed out that he was the only way to God. John chapter 14 verse 6. Now, have you acknowledged that this is fact? We, we've sung several songs today pointing out belief in Christ and wanting to follow Him. And certainly those are good things. We all must and we all should want to follow Christ. But to become His disciple involves having that faith in Him. Not that He merely existed. Secular history tells us that. As we sang moments ago, the empty grave is there to show us that Jesus existed. But he also ascended. But Jesus Christ is deity. Until you believe in that. Build your faith on that concept. You will not be qualified to obey the gospel. That is to repent of your sins. Confess Christ before others. And ultimately be baptized for the remission of sins. Now if you have not. Put on Christ in baptism. Or if perhaps you have fallen away. There is another warning that Jesus gives. In Luke chapter 13. The first five verses. It's interesting to note that Jesus used current events. Luke chapter 13 verse 1 there. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans. Whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them. Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they, off, they suffered such things? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So to those who have not accepted Christ as the Savior, that doesn't mean He's not the Savior. That just means you don't accept Him as the Savior. You have the opportunity this afternoon to put on Christ in baptism. And for those who might have fallen away, to have allowed sin back into their lives, to have your garments tainted with sin, you have the opportunity now to put that sin away by contacting the blood of Christ once more. Whatever your need might be this afternoon, please make it known as together we stand and sing.